Let us start a new topic, consumer theory. In this, what we try to do is we try to understand consumer behavior or what factors go into the purchasing decisions made by different individuals. And we'll look at one person at a time. The reason why we buy stuff is because purchasing gives us satisfaction. If it didn't, we won't buy it. And so the ultimate purpose of consumption is satisfaction that you derive from consumption. In economics, we call this utility. And what is utility? It is the amount of satisfaction received from consumption of a product. Initially, philosophers slash economists grappled with the idea, can we measure utility or satisfaction derived from consumption of a good pretty much like distance or we cannot and look at the following there are two ways we can measure things one is we can measure it in precise terms for example if you look at the distance between us and mexico probably it's a thousand miles depending on where you're starting from and the us and say brazil say several thousand miles. Now, if you can measure this in precise terms, what we are looking at is called cardinal measurement. And this is when you can measure different alternatives in precise terms. Similarly, in terms of temperature, we have been able to devise a rule as to how we can measure temperature. Another way to look at measurement is called ordinal measurement. And here what we can do is we can rank our different alternatives. For example, we can definitely make a statement even if we do not know the exact distance and that between say US and Mexico and US and Brazil, we can definitely make a statement like Brazil is further away from the US relative to Mexico or today is warmer relative to yesterday <clears throat> and so on. So we do not have to know in precise terms what the temperature is. We just rank different alternatives. So initially what philosophers slash economists did is they believed that somehow eventually we'll be able to measure utility in terms of cardinal measurement or we should be able to devise a scale through which we can measure it in precise terms. And later on it was dropped. So for the purposes of this course, what we'll look at or we'll assume that, that utility is measurable in precise terms or there is a scale through which we can measure utility and this would be called cardinal utility. So we are trying to understand the behavior of one consumer or what we are looking at is consumer theory. Now this can be broken down into two parts. Number one is consumer preferences. Do you really like Honda Accord over Ford Taurus or is it the other way around? And the second part of consumer theory is the financial reality that all of us face and that is the budget constraint. So I may prefer Porsche over Ford Taurus but then I do not have the money to buy it. So what we look at are two parts. One is consumer preferences and number two are budget constraint or the financial reality. Now here let us just make very basic assumptions about this person that we are trying to analyze in terms of consumption choices. We believe that this consumer is rational and by rational we mean this person is trying to maximize total satisfaction. I'll just write total satisfaction subject to the financial reality or the budget constraint or the budget constraint. ST stands for subject to the budget constraint. So this would be implied by rationality. The second part 
of this assumption is perfect knowledge. That means this person knows all that has to be known about a product, prices, and so on. So the consumer is rational and has perfect knowledge. The second assumption we make is this person can measure utility in precise terms or cardinal measurement of utility is assumed. As a first step, let us look at consumer preferences. And we already know what is utility. And we distinguish between what is total utility, that is the total satisfaction that you derive from consumption of a product. And this has to be distinguished from marginal utility. And we'll abbreviate this as MU and total utility as TU. So MU is the amount of satisfaction derived from consumption of each additional unit of a product. For example, when I consume, say, one apple, what is the satisfaction I receive from consuming this first apple? That will be called marginal utility. I consume the second apple, and I get some marginal utility from there, or some utility from there called marginal utility. And then we can also figure out what is the total satisfaction that I have received by eating two apples. And that will be total utility. So once again, total utility is the total satisfaction derived from consumption of a product. And marginal utility is the satisfaction you derive from each unit of the product or from consumption of each additional unit. Or in other words, in terms of a ratio, marginal utility is simply change in total utility divided by change in consumption. And now what we'll do is we'll look at a specific example in terms of number, the relationship between marginal and total utility. Let us look at a hypothetical example where this person purchases only two things, movies and sodas. And what we have here are different quantity of movies. And here note that quantity of movies increases as we go down this column. And here we have quantity of sodas. And here you'll observe that as we go up the table, the quantity of sodas increases. Now this person tells us how much satisfaction he receives from watching each movie, or in other words, marginal utility. For example, when this person watches no movie, this person gets no satisfaction, so it is zero. When this person watches one movie, the satisfaction or the marginal utility derived from the first movie is 50 units. When this person watches the second movie, this person derives a satisfaction of 38 units, or its marginal utility of the second movie is 38. From the third movie, this person gets a satisfaction of 33 units, or the marginal utility received from the third movie is 33 units. Now consider the following. Based on these marginal utility numbers, we can derive total utility. And how do we do this? Just remember, total utility is a running total of marginal utility, or simply a cumulative total. So from the first movie, this person gets a marginal utility of 50 units. So what is the total utility received after watching one movie? It will be 50 units. Now, from the first movie, this person gets a marginal utility of 50. From the second movie, this person gets a marginal utility of 38. Or the total utility received by this person after watching two movies will be 50 plus 38, and that will be 88. Then what is the total utility when this person has watched three movies? From the first two movies, this person gets a total utility of 88 units. And from the third movie, this person gets a marginal utility of 33. So what will be the total utility this person derives by watching all three movies? It will be 121. How do we get this number? It will be 88 plus 33. 
and in this way we can complete this column with respect to total utility. Now let us look at the example of sodas and here remember we are moving up the table from the first soda the total utility this person derives is 75 units so how much will be the marginal utility associated with the first unit of soda it will be 75 now after having consumed two units of sodas this person gets a total utility of 117 so how much will be the satisfaction or the marginal utility associated with the second unit of sodas it will be 117 minus 75 and that will be 42 and in this way we can complete this column with respect to marginal utility here we have a complete table of consumer preferences of a person who would like to purchase movies as well as sodas and and we know how to calculate total utility from marginal utility we also know how to calculate marginal utility from total utility now observe certain things about these numbers number one here when you look at these numbers or here all these numbers with respect to marginal utilities from movies or so does you find these numbers are non-negative and if marginal utility is negative what this indicates is you you get dissatisfaction by purchasing this good or consuming this good and so marginal utility can be zero that means you can derive no satisfaction from a particular product or this number has to be positive and that's when you will buy this product. Why? Because a positive marginal utility indicates satisfaction. So this person does get satisfaction from watching movies or drinking sodas. Another thing you will observe about these numbers is as you have watched more and more movies, what happens to the marginal utility? It continuously declines or the marginal utility associated with the next movie is always lower than that of the previous movie and a similar thing you will observe with respect to sodas and this is referred to as a property or an assumption uh, of diminishing marginal utility and what is it as you consume more and more of a product marginal utility declines and this should make intuitive sense the first car I bought, it gave me a lot of satisfaction. When I bought the second car, it gave me satisfaction, but not as much as the first car. Then I bought the third car. The third car didn't give me as much satisfaction as the second one, though it did give me satisfaction. So we believe this is so true of every individual. That is, the more and more you consume, marginal utility will continuously decline the total utility will go on increasing and so this is referred to as the law of diminishing marginal utility so here is the statement of law of diminishing marginal utility and what it states is marginal utility from each subsequent unit of a product declines as we consume more and more of a product and we observe this in the case of movies as well as sodas now what I've done is I've drawn a diagram where we have quantity demanded of movies on the horizontal axis and on the vertical axis we have marginal utility this person derives from watching each movie. So when this person watches the first movie this person gets a marginal utility or a satisfaction of 50 units so we get the first point. When this person watches the second movie this person gets a marginal utility of 38 units and we get the second point from the third movie this person gets a satisfaction of 33 units and so we have the third point and in a similar way we can plot all those points and join them and what we get is a marginal utility curve and this is downward sloping indicating that as this person watches more movies its marginal utility continuously declines so this completes our discussion here.